Hey guys, Kenny here. Today we want to kind of finish up our renewable energy unit by talking about how can society transition to a more sustainable energy future. As we begin to wrap up and think about all the things we've covered, all the things that we've learned over the course of these two terms, uh, I, I think it's important to reflect on what our original goal was, and that is thinking about a future that's sustainable. Now we'll tie that in today together with energy in particular, but I want you to think about this overall as we start thinking about your worldview and where we fit and what we can do to try and make our planet a better place moving forward. Okay, so let's look at our essential questions. Number one, how important are our energy choices in establishing sustainability? Okay, we spent, what, essentially two full units on energy options, our traditional fossil fuels, and then our sustainable energy options. And then we kind of related those to air pollution and climate change. And so I think the future of our country is gonna rely on the answer to this question here. Number two, how are energy, the environment and the economy linked? This class is focused mostly on the energy, the environmental piece uh, and the impact that our decisions make, especially with things like the environment and energy but I can't separate out the economy as well. Human life and the advances that we've made require energy. What role does that play in terms of what we ex expect for people living on our planet? Not just in Western developed worlds, but in countries across the planet. And number three, what steps need to be taken to secure a sustainable energy future? And this is the biggest goal for today. So not only do we know what we've covered and what we can learn from it, but what's next? Where do we go now if we're looking to help our planet and ourselves moving forward? Now, I thought it'd be a good place for us to start if we went back over sustainability and what that means, if we're gonna try and tie this all back together to what we started with at the beginning of the class. So sustainability is the ability of Earth's natural systems and human culture systems to survive and flourish into the long-term future. And we identified three spheres of sustainability that we needed to keep in mind as we were doing our study of environmental science. Those are environment, economic, and social. And I really do believe that all of these need to be kept in mind. And if we're going to be truly sustainable, we need to go ahead and start looking at that center section of overlap where it says sustainability, okay? We can't just do social environmental. We can't just do socioeconomic. We can't just do environmental economic. We must include all of these aspects if we hope to be successful in terms of finding a sustainable future moving forward. At the beginning of this semester, we started talking about how not only do we have these common pool resources, but that Earth is the ultimate common pool resource. Remember, a common pool resource is a type of resource where exclusion is difficult and overuse by one decreases the benefits for other users. We have talked about common pool resources throughout this class and identified that it is great, at its greatest extent, the earth is the common pool resource. And that all facets of the human earth relationship relate to the health of the environment and it providing us with resources we need to survive. And we talked a little bit about the impact that astronauts have looking at earth from space. And I wanted to use this picture because it, it hints towards that greater overall picture of our planet as one big thing. But it also goes ahead and shows the lights in North and South America, showing you just how much we rely on energy. You look at so much of the New England portion of our country, you look at the West Coast of our country, a lot of lights is what you see from space. It is without a doubt an important aspect of our livelihood. Energy has had a transformational impact 
on the quality of human life. And we see this in developed economies and the remarkable advances in technology and medicine. But at the same time, energy impacts major world issues, everything from housing to hunger, health care, clean water, education, fertility rates, the status of women, immigration, and climate. It impacts many issues in the world today. And it is one of the most important issues of our time and will greatly impact the face of our future. How do we deal with energy? What does that look like moving forward? Which brings us to what we call the three E's, the environment, the economy, and energy. And this should look familiar. It's similar in many respects to the three spheres of sustainability. In this particular instance, we've swapped out social with energy. And these different things represent stuff that we've covered over the course of this class, okay? The environment includes population, land, water, air, atmosphere. The economy includes poverty, competition, growth, and energy includes fossil fuels, nuclear, and renewables. Okay. And hopefully you see once again that there's overlap here, that we can use all of these things and if we can find good answers in terms of our investigations, in terms of our use of these resources, we can move towards a more sustainable outcome. But in reality, it's even more complex than that. It has many overlapping intermediate systems. Okay? Maybe it looks something a little bit more like this, where we've got the legal aspects, the political aspects, the social aspects, in addition to the environment, the economy, and energy. The productive work, however, the compromises, the data, the civil discourses, these happen in that overlapping space where it says interactive systems. And it's gonna take critical thinking to address some of the biggest issues. Questions like, can poor nations afford to invest in the environment? And if they can't, what then? So remember that Nothing exists in a vacuum. We talked about system and surroundings. You can't escape the fact that the decisions you make in one of these spheres is going to impact the outcomes in the other spheres as well. So we need to keep in mind the interests of humanity as well as the interests of the planet and find solutions that fit into that interactive systems portion of sustainability. So what steps are we gonna look at for a sustainable energy future? Well, we can make the transition to a more sustainable energy future by one, greatly improving energy efficiency. We need to recognize how much energy we use, what we use it for, and how much of that we actually need because some of it we need to maintain the lifestyle that we've developed on our planet. Others are less important. Two, we need to use a mix of renewable energy resources in addition to our fossil fuel. The days when we could rely solely on fossil fuels are numbered. Our climate cannot sustain that. We cannot survive as a species, as a planet, if we continue to use fossil fuels at the rate we currently are. But that transition is going to be a challenging one. Okay? People don't want to give up what they currently have. And so how do we invest in these renewable energy resources when things like solar, when things like wind are intermittent? And the cost of implementing things like hydroelectricity or geothermal are expensive to get off and running. And so even though the price is really low to operate and maintain them, you still have that initial investment in capital to go ahead and get those systems up and running. And, and this is, we're talking about a decade to go ahead and get these approved, funded, and in place. Except maybe some wind farms, you might be able to get that done in smaller scale for 
in a year. Okay, but that's going to be necessary if we're going to go ahead and make this work. And three, we're going to have to include the environmental and human health costs of energy resources in their market prices. What we've talked about all year long, this full cost pricing. If we do not have a pricing model that includes internal costs of production and marketing plus external costs to human health and the environment, we're not going to really know what is affecting us in the long term. Okay? The fact that we have such heavy subsidies for fossil fuels keeps the price artificially low. We don't realize just how impactful the use of it is. And the only way to make the general population understand the impact of their decisions is to make it more financially even in terms of a playing field. Because the cost of a lot of these renewables is dropping precipitously. And it's competitive. It's already getting to the point where it's competitive. And if you make fossil fuels actually cost what they cost us as a population, as a planet, these transition to these sustainable, more green, more renewable energy sources doesn't seem like a far-fetched thing, but an imperative that needs to occur. Okay. So as we start choosing our future energy paths, we have to remember that we're reducing the impacts on all of all the forms of energy on the environment, land, air, water, atmosphere. And that in order to make sure that the entire planet is on board and making the changes to keep our planet functioning, functioning properly, we have to end poverty and economic poverty and energy poverty around the globe. And so as that becomes priority and we start finding ways to empower people to take the care of their own environment, we begin to transition away from coal to natural gas, because I, I don't think we can give up fossil fuels and maintain what we currently have. But we can no longer ignore the damage we as humans are doing to the environment, especially with respect to the climate. And this is going to require a diversified portfolio and a smart electrical grid. So we move to incorporate more nuclear, more renewable investments, realizing that most of the world is not poised to do what Iceland is in terms of moving towards 100% renewable energy right now. So we have to mitigate the environmental impact until we can improve our energy production systems to provide the energy we need in a way that is safe for the planet. And lastly, we need to work towards increasing energy efficiency in terms of infrastructure, production, and use. And at the heart of this is education, what you've just come to the end of. We need better educated leaders and better educated populations. Because to make the transition work, there are some habits in all sectors that need to be broken. And that is going to require patience and fortitude as we weather the road ahead of us. So as we begin to choose our future energy path, we have to remember that the choices are not going to be easy. And energy, the environment, and our economy are tightly linked together. Critical thinking is central to our ability to make good decisions as we head into our energy future. We cannot leave out any of these spheres of influence if we hope to be successful in this necessary transition. So what kind of things are we likely to see? I personally think that you're gonna see a gradual shift to smaller decentralized micropower systems. You're gonna see a combination of increased energy efficiency and transition to renewable energy. And I also think that because fossil fuels are cheap, easy, and available, we will likely continue to use them, but have to focus on decarbonization, the process of cutting out these carbon spewing fossil fuels, 
and rely on the cleaner versions like natural gas as we begin a global transition away from fossil fuels. Now, I wanted to leave you today with a quote related to this uh, from former President Barack Obama. The path towards sustainable energy sources will be long and sometimes difficult, but America cannot resist this transition. We must lead it. We cannot cede to other nations the technology that will power new jobs and new industries. We must claim its promise. That's how we will maintain our economic vitality and our national treasure, our forests and waterways, our croplands and snow-capped peaks. That is how we will preserve our planet, commanded to our care by God. That's what will lend meaning to the creed our fathers once declared. You are the future, politically, socially, economically. And I hope that this class has given you some insight into what you can do to help in leading for a sustainable future. Okay, guys, that's what I've got for you. Stay healthy, stay safe. Take care of yourselves, and I'll take, talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.